Well, hello, welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament. We're reading through Hebrews uh, and up to chapter 5. And in the earlier few verses, from the end of chapter 4, the author has introduced this notion of Jesus as the high priest. And in throughout this work, we're getting lots of allegorization and an allegory based on Old Testament ideas. And the author now moves to the idea of uh, Melchizedek, the great high priest, and seeing Jesus as the high priest. Pasca uh, Archirus ex Anthropon Lebanominos, Huper Anthropon Kathistatai Ta Proston Theon. Hina Prosfere Dora Tekai Thusias Huper Hamation. Metrio Pathane Denominos Tois Ag Nousi Kai Plano Menois Epe Kai Autos Perike Tai Asthenean Kai di Autain O Fele Cathos Peritu Lau Hutos Kai Periautu Prosperane Perihamation. It's a long sentence there. For every high priest, this is the Passive, present passive participle from Lambano, being taken from among men, from mankind. So the emphasis here is that the high priest is chosen or taken from among mankind. Kathistatai, well, this is from Kathistami, uh, often can just mean is, but um, is, is um, appointed almost here in respect of the things regarding God on behalf of men. So he is appointed on behalf of mankind in regard to the things pertaining to God. Might, there might be a reasonable translation there. Hina, in order that, prospero is to offer, and this is the subjunctive, so in order that, present subjunctive, in order that he might offer Dora, gifts, Tekai, so both gifts and sacrifices. This is the accusative plural from Thusia, first to clinch an alpha pure feminine noun, on behalf of sins. Uh, metriopathane is a funny word. It's fairly rare. It does occur in Aristotle and it's also in Philo of Alexandria. It's often translated to deal gently with. It's an interesting translation. It's from metrio in measure and the pathane is from pasco to suffer. So um, it's literally to, uh, to be affected or to suffer in due measure. And we get dunaminos participle. So being able, well, um, to suffer in due measure, or perhaps some translations say to deal gently with, it, it has the sense of to be able to um, share in the experiences of those who are agnotusin. This is a dative present participle from agnoeo. It's an epsilon contract verb. You see the roots, the alpha neg negating and the gnot. Uh, so those who are without knowledge, so the ignorant. So being able to almost to sympathize in due measure with the ignorant and another dative participle from plan not o to wander. And those who are, uh, well, perhaps wandering off the path. Epe kai autos periketai as the noun. Uh, since also he himself, perikatai, came is often used as a passive for the verb tithemi. And probably that's what's happening here. It's a perikamai as a passive. Um, so is um, lies around, so is beset by, I think it's generally translated. Um, so is, and since he himself also, I forget the Kai, is beset by asthenia weakness. Kai di autain, and because of this, Ophele, uh, he is obliged. 
and we uh, yeah so he is uh, he is obliged and we want an infinity which is down here so he is obliged prosperine to make an offering peri hamation regarding sins uh, cathos um, just as now peri we would expect hooper here on behalf of the people which we had before peri and hooper in biblical greek are kind of becoming interchangeable so peri around rather than hooper but it's on behalf of so it's um, on account of this cathos just as he is obliged uh, to offer regarding sins on behalf of the people hutos kai thus also regarding himself so it's slightly uh, funny word order here so i'll just do that bit again and because of this that is because of his weakness he is obliged to make an offering for sins um, uh, so, so on account of this, just as he is obliged to offer, to make an offering regarding sins on behalf of the people, in the same way also, understand he is obliged to make an offering peri auto regarding himself. Kai uk hi auto tis lambane tain timain ala kaluminos hupatutheu kathospe kai eron. And uh, someone does not uh, take tain timain the honor uh, hiato for himself. So he doesn't take this role for himself, this honor. But uh, understand he is kaluminos, called by God, kath hosper, it's kata plus hosper, just as also Aaron understand was called or we might say just like Aaron Hutos Kai Christos Ukiaton Edoxasen Genethenai Archiaria Alaholelesas Prosauton Huios Mu E Su Ego Semeron Gegene Ka Se Thus also the Messiah did not glorify from Doxasdo, he out on himself. Uh, well, we get an infinitive here, to become the high priest. But the one having said to him, uh, you are, and then this famous quotation, this is in the New Testament, in the Gospels as well, you are my son, Samaron, today I have begotten you, just as also in hetero, in another place, lege, he says, suhires es tonaiona kataten taxan melchizedek. Now the quotations here, this one is from Psalm 2, this is from Psalm 110. Um, so just as also he says in another place, in hetero, in another, um, I'm going to supply topos here, or topo here or something, in another place, you understand are a priest, as tonai owner, that standard idiom, forever, according to the taxin Melchizedek, according to the order of, of Melchizedek. Taxus is a funny word, it um, is often used in a military sense of a putting your troops in order, uh, and it has the sense here, the order of Melchizedek. The rank is another word for it. It is, by the way, thought that our modern word taxi, which is short for taxi cab, may have been uh, may be etymologically related to this but anyway you can look up that yourself uh, so according to the rank or the order of Melchizedek Hos entice hemerais te sarcos autu dieses te kai 
hikaterias pros ton dunamon so zane out on ekthalatu unfortunately we have to go over the page here this is uh, a tricky sentence made worse by page break meta krauges iskuras kai dakruen pros eninkas kai es akuses apotes eulabeas kai per horn huios emathen af hone epathen ten hupakoin so the main verb is here for the whole sentence now we do have a participle which affects all that goes before so we have to keep in mind this participle prosenenkas which is an aorist nominative uh, participle from prospero it's got that verb of offering so we'll keep that bit in mind as we go back so hos who entice hemorrhous test sarkas alto in the days of his flesh now these are all accusatives here we've got two of them connected by tet and chi and we have to understand that participle from the next page H having offered both the ss we get de amai to ask and de asis is the third declension feminine abstract noun from that so requests so having offered requests and hikateria supplications to the one being able to save him ekthanatu from death and he did that meta krauges iskuras kai dakruon with literally strong uh, cries Krauge is connected with krasdo to cry out. This is just the abstract noun. So with cry, with uh, with mighty cries, with strong cries, and tears. And there's our participle. Uh, kai and s akustes. This is another participle. It's an aorist passive from asakuo. Having been heard. Um, apotes eulabeus eulabeus is a word meaning piety or reverence so and having been heard we would say as a result of his reverence or piety kaipere this is good classical greek here kaipere plus a participle although although being a son emathen he learnt and the object of this is here, I think, ten hupakoin. He learnt obedience. Afhon, typical um, uh, Greek here where they leave out the antecedent. So from those things which, epathen, from Pasco, this is the aorist, he suffered. So although being a son, he learnt obedience from those things which he suffered. Kai teleothes egeneto pasin tois hup aku usinauto aetios soterias ioniu pros agaruthes hupotutheu archirus katatain taxin melchisedek. And, I know we've done, we haven't done that bit, so he learned obedience, and uh, having been made perfect, this is from tel i o o, this is the aorist passive participle. Having been made perfect, agenito, he became itios. Now, um, some translators translate this as the cause, but it's actually a nominative and it's going with the agenito. So I would think rather it's responsible for, is probably a better translation here. He became responsible for, uh, and it's taking a genitive, the uh, eternal salvation. And we get a dative participle here for all the ones obeying from Hupakuo, and that takes a dative for the ones obeying him. So, having become perfect, he became responsible for the eternal salvation for all the ones who obey are obeying him. Pros Agaruthes, 
This is uh, having been, well, proclaimed, I think is generally the meaning of this. It's pros plus agaruo, and it's in the passive participle here. It's only here in the New Testament. So having been proclaimed, archihirus, chief priest, high priest by God, kataten taksin Melchizedek, according to the rank of Melchizedek. Final part of this chapter. Perihu polos humin hologos kai dus hermene sorry dus hermenutos legain epe no throi ge gonati tais a kais kai ga ophelon tesenai didaskaloi diaton kronon palin crayon eketi tu didaskan humas tina ta stoikea tes Arces turn logion to theu, kai gegonete creane contes galactos usterias trophes. Um, now, this breaks off now into a, another little section here in which he sort of uh, upbraids his audience to some extent to say that they're, um, they're not as well versed in all these things as they ought to be. So he says, regarding which, um, I'm going to supply the verb to be, there is, uh, the word for us is much. That's a fancy way of saying, regarding this, I have much to say. Or so, logos, the word or the account, there is much account for us regarding this. Um, and, understand, it is, dus hemen, Menutos legain, and it is well, and to speak it is, um, it, it is a word which is difficult to expound legain in speech to say. This is <coughs> from there's a verb, <coughs> verb uh, we get our word hermeneutics from this. Hermeneuo is to interpret, can mean to translate. Or to interpret. Dus is a, a little prefix you put on to make something difficult. So it's difficult to interpret, perhaps expound. Uh, and it's nominative agreeing with logos. So um, the word is much and difficult to expound, uh, legain to speak. So perhaps you could put it around another way a little bit. So, um, uh, it's hard to well you can par you have to paraphrase it to some extent here so concerning which uh, for us to speak this word there is much to say and it is difficult to expound probably the best I can do there you can look at the modern translations but that's what it is epe no throi gegonete because you have become you are you have become Nothros is a funny word, it's um, not overly common, it's, does it, it occurs in Plato, there was a classical word nothes, meaning sluggish, and this has been just regularised into a second declension adjective here, it's only here in the New Testament and I think only very rarely in the Septuagint, so it means sluggish, slow, dull of senses, Tice a koos for for the hearings, or a a koa can also mean ears. So you have become sluggish in your ears, or you have become uh, slow, dull of senses in your hearing. Kaiga ophelon tesenai didaskaloi diaton kronon palin crayon ekati tu didaskan humas. Tina ta stoikea tes oi arces turn logion to theu kai gegonete crayon contes galactos kai in brackets usterias trophes. So he continues on here, he says, um, um, uh, it you ought to, it's a participle here, uh, you are obliged, so. Um, 
uh, yeah, so being obliged uh, to be teachers, dear Ton Cronon, well, it's through time, so after all this time, um, being obliged to be teachers, Ekete, you have crayon need uh, palin again. Now, the next bit's a little bit tricky. The Greek here says tina, and you'll notice there's a variant reading. With this accent, tina, it's from tis indefinite. So t translating it as it's written, it says, you have need for tina for someone to teach, so as to teach you, ta stoikeia, another interesting word with a lot of philosophical overtones. It probably means here the elements of, the rudiments of, the beginning of, the logion to theu, now this is not logon, it's logion, uh, and it has the meaning of the oracles, the oracles of God. It, it doesn't refer to the Old Testament, it probably means in the sense of divine revelations from God. Um, and you have, be, you have become having need, it's a rather funny Greek here, you are uh, you are in a situation where you have need galactos from gala is the word for milk this is the genitive it's a third declension noun of milk and then in brackets chi and not stereos trophes uh, not generally translated solid food uh, stereos in means firm or strong sometimes so, of firm nourishment, trophé. Now, just to come back to a few things here, the uh, variant reading, the other reading is tina with the accent on the iota. And if the accent were there, that would make it a neuter plural going with stoikeia. However, the editors here, I think rightly, have put tina, meaning someone. So, just to put and now stoicheia uh, elements. Interestingly, if you know your geometry, you'll know that Euclid wrote the ta stoicheia, the elements of geometry. Uh, the, the works of, of Euclid are called the, the stoike, ta stoicheia, the elements. However, the word itself comes to have a lot of philosophical meaning. Here it's just perhaps rudiments or elements. The logios, or the, sorry, the logia, I think it's a neuter plural, uh, the oracles, referring to, well, divine revelations from God, not necessarily the Old Testament. Uh, so just to do that a bit again, uh, so for um, you being, you ought to have to be teachers because of the after such period of time, um, and you have need again, so as for someone to teach you the principles or, or the elements or the rudiments of the beginning of the oracles of God, and you have become having need. So you're in a situation where you have need, galactose genitive, of milk and not of solid nourishment, not of firm food or solid nourishment. Pasca hot meteco and galactose aperos logu de kaiosunes, nepioska estin. I'll just finish it off. Teleon de esti heisteria trophe, ton dia ten hexin ta aiste. Teria, gegum nasmena ekonton pros diacrisin kalu tekai kaku. For the one sharing, this is this metako to share. So the one sharing in milk, understand, is a peros inexperienced of the word of righteousness. For he is napios a baby. Napios 
probable etymology is this nay, it's nay and ep, that someone who is unable to speak and hence an infant. And of course infant is just the Latin for the same thing, unable to speak. So for he is an infant, uh, the solid food is, and then we get a genitive, so belongs to those who are perfect. So it's literally of the perfect is the solid food. The solid food belongs to the perfect. And then in apposition to this teleon, we get tone. And if you look through, there's a, a genitive participle down here. So the tone goes with the acontone. Hexin is an extremely rare word. Uh, probably means something like habit. It is, I think, connected with echo, but I think it often it has the sense of habit. Isteteria is another rare word. It does occur in Plato and the Septuagint, but it's only here in the New Testament. It's in Plato. It's the organ of perception, or if you will, the faculty of the mind for perception. Gegum nasmina is a perfect participle. Uh, gum nasdomai is to train or to exercise. Uh, it's connected with gumnos naked, of course, because in the ancient world people exercised uh, in the nude. And this is the perfect participle here. It's being used as an adjective with this uh, abstract noun here. So putting that together... Um, so, for solid food belongs to the perfect, those having deatain hexin by means of habit or through habit, um, those who have ta isthetera, the well, the faculty of mind having been trained, so those who um, by habit, have a faculty of mind which has been trained. Pros, with regard to the diacrisin, the discernment, I think we've had that word before, um, between good and evil. And that's the end of chapter 5.